Hey everybody, I'm Jack and I am the Avid Assistant. Now uh, this is going to be hopefully a shorter video than my normal ones because um, what we're going to talk about is updating practices for Avid MC. Now you would be forgiven for looking at Avid Link and um, seeing that there was an update notification there for me a composer and just going on hitting that update and then thinking Bob's your uncle that, that's you done it's going to update your media composer. But I can't really recommend you do that. You know, I, it's been uh, buggy ever since it was initially introduced as a feature. And, you know, if you want just a clean, fresh install of Media Composer that's going to, you know, give you your best start on the newest version and you're not going to run into issues and bugs, um, the method that I'll show you, um, which is fairly self-explanatory, just doing a clean uninstall and reinstall, you know, you're far less likely to have issues if you update this way. Now, we're also going to talk about user settings. Now you may or may not know that uh, when you update Avid Media Composer it is highly recommended that you update your um, user settings. And I don't just mean, you know, hit the update. Um, I mean freshly create new user settings, you know, reconfigure your keyboard and everything else. And uh, this can be a bit of a pain and can take a while. But I, I will show you a little trick that I have shown in previous videos. Um, as part of the update process, this is something I always do. That will save you a lot of time when doing that. It'll allow you to like pour over your, your keyboard and your, your map top keys and things like that into your new user settings. Though, though beware, you can't pour everything, and even some stuff you can pour over, you shouldn't. So, uh, that's enough preamble from me. Let's get into it. Right, now, as you can see in my Avid link here, if I go down to Media Composer, um, there is an update available. Yeah, installed as 2022.7 and 2022.10 is currently available. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, we have our um, update button here where Avid Link will purportedly um, uninstall Media Composer and install the new one and download and do everything for us um, like some other software does do. But this has many times been the cause of bad installs and buggy um, behaviors in Media Composer so I can't recommend you do that. Um, so let's show you how I would go about it. So first off uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to launch Avid Media Composer. And this is because once we install the, the newer version and we complete our install, uh, we're going to want to port our old settings over or try and uh, at least our keyboard and, and port some things over from our old settings. Um, and so to just make that really simple for us, I'm going to export my current user profile onto my desktop um, just temporarily so that I have that available for us. Um, now, this isn't an essential step, and if you forget to do it, you can go straight to the shared added folder where it stores the user profile settings and do it from there. Um, but I find it'll just be slightly easier if you export it from Media Composer first um, and then you have it um, in a very quick to access location like your desktop. Right, so here we are. I've just opened up a quick project um, and I've uh, brought up the settings window here. Uh, now, once you have this up, uh, just go over to the user tab and under user profile where you would select your settings, scroll down here and go export user or user profile. So I'll export this just as a local version and set the location to the desktop. I'll just and I'll just put it in a folder called Avid Settings 2022.7. Cool. Now that's all we had to do in Avid MC, so I'm gonna quit this now. And then once Media Composer successfully quit, we're gonna run the Avid uninstaller. So this is what's gonna help us give a clean install. So if you go to your applications, um, next to your media composer, um, this will be in your programs um, in Windows, there will be a folder called Avid Uninstallers. Um, and there's uninstallers here for various Avid apps. We want the media composer one. So we just click on that. And then you'll get this window here. Um, and everything you know that I have currently have installed is ticked. So I'm just gonna leave all that ticked and hit uninstall. You'll have to authenticate it, which is fine. And let this process completely finished and uninstall the application before um, we start installing the new one. So here we are, we're finished. So we can hit quit. Now you'll see that Media Composer is gone from my dock. So now what we're going to do is download the new version. I'll show you where you'll get it. So I'll just open a browser window here and I'll go www.avid.com. Go up here to get to your account. Um, I've already signed in um, previously, but if you hadn't, you'd have to sign in. Uh, then just jump to My Products. 
Now I have a few things from Avid here, but um, you'll just scroll to your subscription. So in my case, it'd be Media Composer Ultimate. If you have a standard version, it would just say Media Composer like this. Um, but either way, scroll to the one that you have and just click on it to do the drop down menu. And now if you click here, view software download links, it's going to give you a download link to the very latest version um, of that piece of software that you've clicked on, that you've purchased. Um, so here it is here, Media Composer Ultimate 2022.10. So I can click this uh, to start downloading. Um, I'm not going to hit save because I've already done it before this video, but that's how you, where you would go to download it. And just as a little side note, actually, if you're ever looking to downgrade um, or you're looking to go to a specific version of Media Composer, here's where you would find them. So just go to click on account again, uh, signed in and added, and in the four options you get here, click on Download Center. Here's where you're able to download installers for everything added. So if you scroll down a list, we've got a list of all of the different software options here. So I'm just going to go to Media Composer. Now once I click on that, we have all these versions of Avid Media Composer um, available to download going all the way back to, what's the earliest one I can see? Version 5.5.4. That was released in October 2013. So we do have the installers available to us here going back a good number of versions that we can just pull whenever we need. But 2022.10 is the latest. That's what I'm trying to update to. So I'll just come in on my browser and go to where I downloaded Avid to start the install. Here we have it here. So Media Composer 2022.10. Double click on this. So on a Mac at least, it's launched disk image, same as installing anything on a Mac. So we hit install Media Composer and we run the installer. So once this finishes installing, that will be you more or less completed the update. Congratulations. Now it used to be that whenever Avid's installer finishes this update, it would mandate a restart of your machine um, before you'd use it. Uh, it doesn't ask for that anymore, um, but it can't hurt. I, I would recommend doing one, um, you know, so, so you do your update at the end of the day or, you know, w when you have time set aside for it and then reboot the machine. You're just trying to have a, a clean and fresh as, as start as, as possible, basically, um, before you go on to the new version. Right, so my install's finished and I've rebooted my machine and now I'm going to launch Media Composer so that we can set up some fresh settings. Right, now when Avid boots up here, we're going to go to user profile and we're going to create a new one. So we'll create this and we'll call it Avid Assistant 2022.10. I like to put the version number in uh, each user profile that I create, but just, just for tracking really. So we'll create this fresh one and then we'll dive into a project. So I'll just open this one right here. Right, now opening up that settings window again, we still do have a lot of work cut out for us here to rebuild our user settings and get all our customization back in terms of interface coloring and uh, masking, you know, uh, bin settings, all the rest of it. And there's no getting around it, I'm sorry, but you will have to spend some time doing that. I don't think it should take any more than about 20 minutes. Um, I tend to do it at the start of each project as well as updating to any new edit version just so we get fresh user settings for going on to a new venture. But uh, we can save ourselves some time by importing our old keyboard, and I'll show you how. So if you have this settings window up um, under your user profile, then you can go to the file menu and go open setting file. So we hit that. It'll have a window pop up where we can go and select our settings that we've made. So we'll jump to the desktop in that folder we made, and then go right into the settings folder and find this XML. So there'll be an XML inside of every Avid settings uh, folder. So hit open, and then we will have this window come up, which is all of the user settings that were in that user. So I can simply drag and drop settings from this into the new one. So we can see here for comparison, if I open up the active keyboard here, we've got the stock default Avid keys, as you can see there. And if I open up this edit keyboard I have here, you'll find my customized keyboard, which is the one I want. So I'm just going to grab that and drag it and drop over here. And now I have it on this side. Now there's some other settings that you may get away with um, dragging over, like your bin views, for example, since they don't tend to change much between versions. But I definitely wouldn't recommend uh, bringing over export settings or interface settings or anything like that using this method because these settings, like the code within them, 
um, and the amount of options and stuff like that tends to change uh, with each version of Media Composer as, as they add new features and fix bugs and tweak things. Um, and if you drag the settings over here, then you're essentially causing the same issues that you get when you keep with the same user profile. So for most stuff, you are better to just rebuild it again, but at least this drag and drop trick will at least save you some time by getting your keyboard up and running. Now, now that we're all updated, uh, on a, you know, slightly related note, I just wanted to bring your attention to this brilliant website created by Chris Bove, who, uh, an editor who also works with Avid. Um, it's alwaysediting.com. This is uh, Chris's website, so he'll also advertise himself on here. But when, once you're on there, uh, there is the Avid Versions drop-down menu here, where he gives a lot of details on all the releases of Media Composer and exactly which um, operating system they are qualified for. Um, so if you're thinking of about getting a new computer, for, for example, say a new Mac, and you know that if you buy a brand new one, it's going to come with the latest operating system and you don't want to have to tinker with it to try and revert it back, um, you know, this will show you which version of Mini Composer is qualified with that latest OS, or not qualified as it may be. And this isn't necessarily to say that if it's not qualified, it won't work, um, but it just means that if it's qualified, Avid have tested it and they have approved it on that operating system. So if you're running Media Composer on an operating system that it's not qualified for, then there are bound to be compatibility issues and other things that might mean you don't have such a great time. And so this website will help keep you straight with that and, you know, you'll have a, you'll have a much better day and you'll be well prepared. And congratulations everyone, now you know how to properly update your Avid Media Composer. I know for a fact that a lot of people um, not following this method and not creating new user settings um, is the reason for a lot of their bugs and issues with Media Composer. It is the reason why they, they run into a lot of issues. Um, and um, it's and it's not ideal, but it's it's just the way it is. And, you know, you've got to know the software's little quirks um, in order to um, get it to do what you need it to do. So there, there, there's one more that you know. And if you enjoyed the video and you want to see some more, uh, then, you know, check out the rest of the channel. There'll be links in the description. And if you want to know where you can find more of my content, um, it's, it should be on the YouTube homepage, uh, as well as on this, this new Avid Assistant t-shirt. You know, uh, don't even know if you can see that there, but I've got all the links on there for the Patreon, Instagram, YouTube, so you can check it all out there. Or, you know, you can check it out in the video description. Links will be there too. That'll probably be easier, right? Yeah, do that.